Welcome to Terminal Value Podcast. I have Tim Brannion on the line from True Fans LLC. And what we're going to be talking about is the creator economy. And uh, for you know, most people listening, you've probably heard of creators. You know, these are the people who either are bloggers, podcasters, they would say vloggers or YouTubers, et cetera. Uh, but the thing that Tim and I were talking about in the pre-show, which I think is a really uh, interesting idea to unpack, is how uh, people who are currently creators in many cases, either are or are in the process of becoming entrepreneurs or business people, uh, because of course they need to work on things like legal entities, tax withholdings, et cetera. And many people who are professionals at some point in their career will need to become creators uh, because just the way that the current environment works is that the corporate career train for most people ends at some point before they are quote unquote, done with their ability to be economically productive. And if that in that case, uh, a lot of people end up going into business for themselves. And if you're in some kind of business or consulting capacity, and you want to generate authority and get your name up, you have to become a creator, you have to publish. Otherwise, nobody will know you exist. Uh, and so Tim, uh, just uh, take the podium for me. Don't let me talk because I have a tendency to do that. <laughs> No, I, I'm a talker too. Thank, first off, thank you so much, Doug, for, for having me on here. Uh, I'm grateful to, to be here. And, and as I said before, we even started the podcast. Um, you know, I'm, I'm excited to become friends and build the relationship. And, and anytime I can be a service man, you know, don't hesitate to reach out. Um, I will hope to be a to service that. to the audience listening too. So again, my name's Tim Brannion. And the fa- <laughs> right. Yep. Um, but, but again, so my name's Tim Brannon. I'm the founder of truefans.com. And uh, my, my story started as, as a military veteran. Um, I did that. I, I served overseas and, and, and went to some good places, went to some bad places. Uh, I never intended on getting into the tech space. It just became this, uh, you know, the really restlessness and discontent. Yeah. I kind of ended up where I'm at. Aggressive curiosity and just a desire for, for true freedom was this itch that I, I wanted to solve and technology and apps and in this realm that I'm in now made the most sense to me. Um, so through trial and error, through hundreds of thousands of dollars, literally in loss and learning, um, we've had some great wins uh, and, and we're excited about the future. One of our platforms, like, like I just mentioned, uh, you know, so we, I do own a tech company, but one of the ones we're really excited about is True Fans because it's helping content creators um, flip the switch and become that hybrid between content creator and entrepreneur and helping them get paid to post, um, helping yeah. them turn their influence into income. And, and just to kind of like preface who we are and what we, what we are and what we aren't, um, we are uh, very similar to our competitors, right? People have probably heard of, of OnlyFans, Patreon. Uh-huh. The biggest difference is that we are 100% invite only. Uh, so you either have to know somebody that's in or apply and be vetted. And, uh, we, you know, we pay more, we pay faster. We're USA based, uh, veteran owned. Right. And then the biggest kicker is we don't allow adult content. We don't allow porn. So we, we had this idea that we could be the logical choice for creators and, and become a really great platform with features and functions, but also be a home for folks that would love to have an OnlyFans or a member site, but didn't want to be directly associated or connotated with, uh, with the adult industry. So that's, that's a little bit about this man. And it's, it's been really exciting. And I'm excited to dive into, um, you know, more into this topic and and kind of helping people flip that switch. Gotcha. Gotcha. Well, first of all, I want to say thank you very much for your service. Uh, I I myself, I I was, I didn't end up overseas in my service, but I was in the Marine Corps Reserve uh, for uh, six years. I won't say the years. You look a little younger than me. So it's probably, uh, (laughs) it's got a devil dog for your time, but I don't want to necessarily assume. (laughs) Uh, but um, but yeah, and so one of the things I kind of like I'd like to uh, just kind of talk a little bit about is just sort of how the uh, kind of how the creator economy works, and then also uh, for a platform like True Fans, uh, how does it relate to a platform like Patreon or like Mighty Networks? Because you know, at least what I'm seeing is that right, you know, I'll, I'll kind of I'll, I'll include True Fans sort of in that I would call it the um, um, I would almost think it as the private community type of uh, type of market uh which is where you know there's a lot of people who are frustrated with like say twitter facebook or whoever because they track literally everything about you 
And that, you know, that, and all of that data is rapaciously monetized uh, to bombard you with advertising. Now, on the other hand, if you're a marketer, you absolutely love the fact that, tra that, that, that Facebook tracks everything about everyone, because then you can just hammer people with ads nonstop. Exactly. <laughs> but, um, you know, but, you know, if, if you're talking about, if you're a creator and you have a community, there is a growing, there's a growing group of people who are saying, hey, look, I don't want to be dependent on Facebook, for example, for my community. I want that to be something I own. I want that interaction to be something that I own. Uh, there's, it seems like there is an ecosystem of about five or six different solutions that are out there. Um, you know, I, I'd like to hear your thoughts on kind of both that movement and some of the uh, differentiation between the different solutions. Yeah, so, so really people are kind of pissed, man, like as far as users go and, and specifically like the mega users, you know, influencers, the, the people yeah. that are really moving traffic uh, and really rely on that to, to communicate with their people, to connect with their people, to disseminate information, to entertain, to pay, you know, to pay their bills. And, and really that's why we started TrueFans was because of all these pain points that are existing today. I mean, people are being demonetized. People historically haven't made enough money, in my opinion. I think creators are heavily undervalued and underpaid in a lot of cases. And, uh, you know, they're not really given any of that control. Like, so for instance, if you ask for your email list from other, you know, other providers, uh, you know, good luck on that. Yeah, yeah, they're, right. they're not going to give you that. That's their digital asset. Um, whereas us, you know, I look at it like if you brought the traffic, it's yours. We're here to facilitate that as a platform. We're, we're here to facilitate the growth. And, and, and from an algorithm standpoint, uh, we don't limit your reach ever. It doesn't make sense for us to do that in a partnership. It's we want you to get the most possible views and attention and, and engagement from everything we can do. So whether you have five people or 5 million people, it's within our best interest to help you reach every single one of them and, and uh, you know, give you the tools and, and systems to, uh, to do what you do, whoever you are, whether you're a musician, <laughs> whether you're a model, whether you're a fitness coach, a life coach, a nonprofit, um, there's so many different people yeah. that fall into this realm. Anybody that has a community really uh, could benefit from segmenting that community and, and putting, you know, and, and monetizing some of the value, the results that you're able to, to give as, as an individual. So that's, you know, we, we were built because of the problems and, and, uh -huh. and the belief that we could be better. Gotcha. And, uh, yeah. So, gotcha. So Okay. Can I answer the well, question because I think I totally went down a tangent. Too. <laughs> okay. Well, well. So, so for, first of all, um, what, one of my governing philosophies is that I completely encourage, ta encourage tangents as long as they don't okay. take too much time. So you can spend up to thirty <laughs> seconds on any tangent you want. Uh, that's okay. that, you know, that there, there's a word for a that. Timer. That's called in yeah, exactly. There's a word for that, and it's called interesting. Uh, you know, if you stay completely yeah. on topic, those shows are boring. You have to go on a few tangents, otherwise, right. otherwise your show. Do you have just like a bell or something or a horn? <laughs> just, just hit me with a bell or a horn, and then, then okay, I'll yeah. know. Thirty, 30 seconds <laughs> well, is up, <laughs> right? Uh, it, uh, no, but uh, you, you, may, you may have given me an idea for the file. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but uh, I think one of the yeah. things that I'd like to kind of think about and or talk about a little bit uh, kind of along the, the lines of uh, what you were saying is kind of in, in you know, your observation, what does that process look like for going from, okay, I have an idea, I have a few people, let's say I'm starting at five, I have five people who think what I'm doing is kind of cool. Mm -hmm. How do I kind of go from, I have five people who think what I'm doing is kind of cool and I'm a hobbyist to, hey, I'm a creator that's generating legitimate value. And this is, this can even get to an adulty type of career. Sure. And, you know, I, a, I, a I, lot as, of as it, in like a grown up type of thing to do. Yeah, no, a lot of it, man, is just giving yourself permission. So many people don't give themselves permission. And, and when you're, when you're a creator, it's of any sort, your, your product creator, your service provider, yeah. your coach, I think many people, the first step is to give yourself the title. Yeah. You know what I mean, Doug? Like, like you are a professional podcaster. A lot of people that are, that are doing what you're doing right now don't even like speak yeah. that. They don't write well, it out. They don't believe it yet. So that's, that's step one, I think. Go ahead. Well, well yeah. and, and I'd like to unpack that a little bit because I think you're absolutely right. Uh, because so, for example, say you talk about podcasts. OK, so uh, by the time this episode uh, airs, uh, we'll be well north of 100 episodes. Um, awesome. And so 
Uh, thank you. Uh, and yeah, so, you know, so, you know, but the, you know, the thing is right in the real world, uh, your qualifications don't mean anything. In the real world, it's your results and what you produce. And so the thing mm -hmm. that makes you a professional podcaster is if you release podcasts. The thing that makes you a writer is if you write. The thing that yeah. makes you a content creator is if you create. Whether you get paid for it is actually irrelevant. And in a lot of cases, there's a really there's a time lag between when you produce and when you can monetize. Uh, you know, but I think my favorite example here. Uh, pretty much of all time is Tony Robbins, pretty, you know, like one of the most recognizable names on the face of the planet. Uh, you know, if you were born any time in the last quarter, in, you know, in the last half century, you know who he is. Um, mm -hmm. You know, he's pr pretty much, you know, the, you know, the top of the top of the top of the mountain in terms of motivation and self-development. And do you know what his qualifications are? Nothing like literally nothing. He walked out of a six month NLP course because he said, Hey, this is taking too long. I want to help people now. He just went out, produced results and everything went on from there. So yeah. I think what, what you're saying is really important because if you create results, if you create your qualifications, don't mean anything. What matters is the content you create and the results you produce. Exactly. I love that. So the results is actually what you put the price tag on too. For anybody that's out doing consulting work or creative work in general, but one of the hardest things that I, at least I've personally seen is people don't know what am I, what is, what do I charge for this? Yeah. Uh, how much am I worth? And that's, it's kind of like writing your own resume in a way, well, like well, that same it, sort of feeling yeah. where it's like, am I, the, it's just, it's strange. But what I tell folks to, to think on when they're onboarding with us or just people that I've met uh, in walks of life, if I'm consulting, whatever. I think I, I first extract what is the result you're providing somebody. So as a fitness, you know, I've talked to a fitness coach a few months back yeah. and she helps people get in shape. Right. And, and then the front of, of the service, you know, you see workout routines and, and leg routine, various routines, but getting into the weeds of what does that do for someone's life? Right. What is the yeah. result? Are you helping them stay out of the hospital? again you know are you helping them fit into a wedding dress like that's a really important thing and, and if you have the ability capability and intent and track record to get somebody results for that category it's worth probably more than ten dollars you know and when you're really yes. good at that and you know your value and you know the results you can get somebody that's when you say okay my course is five grand and when you, when you invest in that and you get a different market of people too, you know, that, that are really serious, because uh, the truth is, if you get something for free, in a lot of cases, we don't tend to really value it as much. But if you're paying for something that's, you know, high level, most of the time, you get a different filtered crowd that's dead serious yeah. about what it is they're doing. Yeah, well, so and just, I, I'm, I'm going to put, I'm going to put a little bit of a hook into what you're saying also. Mm -hmm. um, which is that, okay, it, you know, if you are purchasing something or if you are selling something, in some cases, you actually, in order to generate uh, client results, you actually have to make it a little uncomfortably expensive. And here's why. It's because if you don't invest a lot into something enough to make it sting, it's easy to just kind of say, oh, well, all right, I'll get to it later. On the that other hand, if the, yeah, if the <laughs> amount that you're paying that you paid hurts, you're saying, okay, I better make this work uh, because it right. almost forces you to pay attention. And because I think that was a mental block that it took me a really long time to come over. So I'm like, why are people charging so much money for this information when you can just get it online for free? I'm like, mm -hmm. okay, well, but that's, you're not charging for the information. You're charging for the motivation to make that information work because you paid so much for it and part of it that too, light you're bulb clicked on. i was like oh okay that's you know what you're really doing by making by by making that cost sting just a little bit is you're creating that internal motivation to say oh no okay i'm going to make this work because otherwise i have really thrown my money away right yeah. And, and who you get to through the door when you have a different price point, it, you see this everywhere you go, you go to a really expensive restaurant. Yeah. That you got a different caliber of, of people that have, that have made it to that level of experience. Yeah. Same thing with hotels, private jets. Who do you think you're meeting on a private jet versus, you know, things, things that cost more, there's different levels to things. And, and not to say that these people are better or worse, whatever. I'm just no. saying like, you know, I, I think the biggest thing is belief, believe in yourself, become worthy of that title 
that you're going to give yeah. and focus on the results you can get someone and, and any, and you know, where do you get belief, right? Where do you, get, I think belief happens in the process of chopping the tree down. Like if you're out doing the damn thing, you did a hundred episodes of this podcast. You are not the same person you were at episode one. Guarantee well, it. Guarantee <laughs> right? it. Well, Talking about okay. that. Like where, like how is, how is doing this effort? Like how have you morphed, right? Even over well, time. I, I think there's uh, there, there's one quote that uh, now, now granted, you know, I I don't generally like to quote, uh, uh, quote Wolf of Wall Street, but there's a Jordan Belfort quote that I just can't get over, and that is that the only difference between who where you are now and where you want to be are the BS excuses inside your head that are holding you back. Uh, that's, Dude, that's something true. that I try to tell myself on, on an almost daily basis because it's completely true. You know, now you're, I was going to say, just because the guy was indicted for securities fraud doesn't mean he was wrong in this regard. <laughs> doesn't mean he was um, evil in everything. Doesn't yeah, mean he yeah, didn't exactly. have anything. Yeah, exactly. I go, yeah, yeah, that's the thing is, yeah, you know, you know, everybody, every person has downfalls. And every person has some redeeming characteristics. You just have to look hard enough to find it. Absolutely. And, but, but that's really the truth is that, right, the difference between where any of us are now and where we want to be is completely inside your head. And so yeah. if you want, once you unwind that, I'm not going to say the rest will take care of itself because you're still going to have to do something. Uh, but the, you know, but the rest of that kind of thing will, you, you will find the internal motivation to bumble mm. through it until you find your path. And I think, I think that's the part that a lot of people um, that a lot of people really trip up on is that there's a, almost nobody goes to straight line from, Hey, I have an idea to, Oh my God, I'm a huge financial financial success. Normally you need to knock your head into a few walls, fail, oh, yeah. just get completely humili humiliated, try over and just say, okay, you know what? I don't care what it takes. I'm going to figure this out. And that's, you know, and at your third or that's fourth it. time through that iteration, that's it. That's when you get to the other side of the line. And I think oh, that, you know, that. that there's a tendency to whitewash that experience and people say like, oh, hey, I had a great idea and a hundred million dollars later, look how successful I am. It's like, okay, well, or you'd say, oh, be a, oh like, um, I forget the fellow's name, but the guy who, uh, Instacart just went public and the founder, I think Instacart was his 17th, uh, his 17th try swing at the swing of the bat, 16 mm -hmm. failures, 17th one just hits it off, hits it out of the park. He's worth like seven bills now. Um, yeah. You know, but the thing is, how many people are going to endure through one failure, much less 16? Very few. Yeah. And, you know, how, how many people don't even try? <laughs> you know, sure. They don't yeah, even they try. don't even get out of the idea phase. No, yeah. you're you're 100% right. One, one of the things that you were talking about was, was learning from people. And my dad told me a quote a long time ago. I don't remember who it actually is from, but it's... Uh, of every man I've ever met in some way is my superior in which I can learn from him. Ralph Waldo and I've taken, Emerson, I believe it's that's a Emerson. wonderful quote, wonderful yeah. quote, who, if it is him. Um, and I took that, I've, I've taken that my whole life. So whether it's the janitor, whether it's a homeless guy, whether mm -hmm. it's a dude that just got out of prison, whether it's a dude that's a military vet, yeah. whatever, whatever walk of life, it's like, I look for things of value that, that people, people will educate you if you listen and, and filter and, and learn, yeah. you know, you, you don't put people in boxes. And uh, so that's been, a, that's, that's been huge. And then what you're talking about, about the, the mind and, you know, your belief and what you say about yourself, that was, a, that's been a long road for me. And I think it's a lifetime thing. Yeah. But for me, dude, I, if you would have told me four years ago, that I would be making the type of money that I'm making now on a residual basis. I would have been like, no, I, I didn't believe it. I didn't, mm -hmm. I didn't think I was worth it. Yeah. And, and, and to unpack that it's information. You have to, you have to really start looking at the information that you're putting into your mind. Like it's got a nutritional value on where you want to go. Yeah. And, and I didn't know that for the longest time, you know, I'm listening to music. That's bullshit. Like I'm listening to, I'm watching shows on TV. That's nonsense. It's not helping me get to where I want to go. It's actually wasting my time. And it's someone else's narrative. And then the same thing, just like someone else's narrative, the people I was associating with early on and before I started getting intentional about where I wanted to go and who I was going to be, uh, I didn't regulate that. And it's not like I don't love, I love everybody, but there are some people that aren't serving you to, to, you know, they, they aren't <laughs> growing you. And they're not sharpening you or making you better. And in fact, there's a lot of people that are pulling you down. So, so, you know, that's a whole mental 
paradigm shift yeah. and it's very hard and most people won't get started in that. They won't actually filter their, they don't filter their diet, let alone filter their mind yeah. on, on, on topics because it's hard. And I don't blame you, dude. If, if people yeah, could really exactly. see what it takes to be successful, most people would opt out before it begins. And I hope yeah. that's a challenge to some of your people that are listening that are actually like the real deal one percenters. Like you guys are no, like they're hard chargers. They're going to get it done. I, I hope that that's a challenge you to be different. And, yeah. and bro, well, like and, you, uh, Doug, like yeah. you, you thanked me for my service, man. Like just in the nuggets that you're giving out on this, this segment of people, like, thank you. Yeah. The, the, the best way that you're thanking me, bro. And I've said this to a couple of people that I've been on with and I, I mean it. The best way that you're thanking me is, being you and being courageous Appreciate enough it. to do this crazy shit they call entrepreneurialism. Yeah. Right. You know? So, so thank you. Yeah. Well, well, yeah. and uh, I appreciate that. And uh, it's, it, it's interesting, you know, cause we're, you know, the, you know, we're, 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 a, we're, we're kind of a, we're a tribe of people who either, uh, either decided this is what we wanted to do or uh, went through some sort of a traumatic career experience yeah. and said, all right, I'm, I'm, I'm not going back. That's actually what happened to me uh, because yeah. in April of 2020, I was, you know, working for a tech company. I'd been about 20 years in the tech industry. I was, you know, the director for the program management office. Okay. You know, nice. you know, you're yay, big title career, all that kind of good stuff. And then we had a new chief information officer come in, you know, the guy who hired me, he gets pushed out, new guy gets parachuted in and I just get fired like that. Cause Ooh. he did the Silicon Valley move, which is to say who's in the other guy's inner circle. I'm getting rid of them and bringing my people in. And so then hit the street, April of 2020, uh, which, I don't know if how many people remember, but that week there were 25 million new unemployment claims. Um, and so I put in literally hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of job applications, nothing, ghosted. Mm. And th th that was kind of the point where I'm like, all right, um, I got to figure something else out. This, th th this is not the way I want, but this is not what I want out of life. Um, and so I think that's you know, so, some people just start from there. Other people have, you know, get there through either, either through a, a mindset evolution or through some kind of abrupt career trauma. And mm -hmm. but like one of the other things we were talking about in the pre-show too, is to really think about, right, what is the goal? Um, you know, because of course, you know, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a Gen Xer, I'm a late Gen Xer, uh, but you know, of course your Gen Xers are all brought up on the work hard, uh, you know, make lots sure. of money, try to retire early and, you know, you know, <laughs> and, 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 you know and pr pretty much it's basically the, we were, we were brought up on essentially the baby boom generation, but only more so, or at least I was. Yeah. Um, and so, but I'm like, I go, okay, you know what? Uh, I don't want to spend 40 to 50 years of my life doing something that I despise, working with people who I'd really not rather not associate with. You know, mm -hmm. to me, wealth is not money uh, because, uh, oh, you know, statistically, the people with the most wealth are the, are the people who, generally speaking, are the oldest and in the worst health and are thus least able to do enjoyable things. To me, wealth is discretionary time, time to be able to do what I mm. want with the people I want. And that's actually one of the reasons why I do this podcast, interestingly enough, is because I get to talk with really interesting, engaging people and have, you know, have mentally stimulating conversations, uh, you know, yeah. kind of side point is that a lot of the people who, you know, who I follow, right, you know, whether it's like the, you know, the Jordan Peterson, whether you're talking about, you know, Robert Kiyosaki, uh, all those types of folks, right, they have like, they all have like more money than God, right? Grant Cardone, they have like more money than God, right? They, they have no need to do anything ever again. All of them have shows. Every single one of them have shows where they talk to people. Why? Because people like to talk. They like to engage with other like-minded people. That is, that is a fundamental human need. And when you take that away, people go crazy, which I think mm -hmm. is a part of what you're seeing with COVID. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, and, I, uh, I mean, and oddly enough, uh, you know, not oddly enough, it's the topic of our conversation. But you know, that's one of the things that that platforms like True Fans addresses is that there is a fundamental need to be able to interact with like-minded people, uh, where you don't have to explain yourself, where you don't have to, um, you know, where you don't have to avoid the taboo topics, where you don't have to keep everything, you know, kind of on a straight and narrow, uh, you know, you know, on the Thanksgiving dinner agenda, you know, or on the sure. you know the corporate water cooler agenda, where you can just be yourself. I think there's a real need for that. And unfortunately, I think social media and mass media has really kind of squashed that in a lot of people's lives. Yeah, I, uh, 
it's definitely necessary connection. And I think, you know, even external of tech, like connecting in real life is this, this thing that I think will make a strong comeback. And it already is, you know, in, in some areas where, yeah. you know, there aren't these aggressive mandates and such, uh, <laughs> I won't go into that topic. I feel very strongly about this thing. Keep that alone. But, uh, you know, in, in, in those areas, you see a, a mass amount of people just wanting to get together. People are, yeah. are craving just for freedom. And I love that. I, I, I think everybody deserves it. Everybody deserves to have somebody that they can connect with and real friends and, and relationships. If you don't have that, pray for that. Right. Put yourself, get, get in the way of, of having friends and people that have your back. And I call them, uh, you know, people that'll stab you in the face, not in the back, <laughs> like real friends that'll let you know, you got a booger on your face. If you're walking down the hallway or something, they don't feel, Yeah, I can't tell him no. uh, people that'll uh, call you out. Those are, those are real homies. Uh, outstanding. Outstanding. All right. Well, well, Tim, give us a, give us a one or two nuggets to, uh, to finish off with and then let us know where, where people can find out a little more. Yeah. Uh, so for the entrepreneurs on here, you belong exactly where you choose to be. Hear me very carefully. You belong exactly where you choose to be. And wealth to you doesn't have to be a picture of everybody else's. Um, you know, get very clear on what, what are the things, even external of money, that you find value. Is it relationships? Is it peace of mind? Is it tranquility? Is it, you know, you can have luxurious things. There's nothing wrong with having the stuff. But, but I think what a lot of people discover is that the stuff doesn't fill all your voids. You know, yeah. I think that we've got a spiritual pillar. I think we've got a, a mental pillar. We've got a family and relationship pillar and, and, and really envision what your amazing life looks like and then start taking action in the behaviors necessary to align with that. Just like the gym, you know, what workout routine should you be doing if you want to get that six pack? So it's the same alignment gotcha. there, I think. And, uh, you know, to connect with me and it's, it's pretty easy. Uh, link, you can Google my name, Tim Branyan, B-R-A-N-Y-A-N. My website should be done next week. We'll see. Knock on wood. Um, it's just timbranyan.com. LinkedIn is Tim Branyan. YouTube, Tim Branyan. TikTok, I just made. So I'm really, you know, coming out of the scenes. I've been behind the scenes a lot and, and it's growth for me and, and uncomfortable. Yeah. Again, pushing through the uncomfortable. But yeah, true fan stuff. If you're a content creator, if you're somebody that's looking for a way to monetize um, and reach your audience and you want to learn more, go to truefanswithaz.com and uh, you can apply for access there. And then I think that's it, right? If you want to build apps, software, stuff like that, my website okay. will be done, but Logic Square is my, my team there, but you'll see all that on LinkedIn. So, gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. Well, hey, hey, Tim, really appreciate your time today. Dude, likewise, brother. I appreciate you having me on and, and good luck to, as you keep progressing, you get to 1000 episodes and yep. I'm pumped for your audience too, man. I know you're making waves in their life, which is, you know, salute to you, bro. All right. Thank you much. <laughs> All right. See you, man. See ya. Thank you for listening to the Terminal Value Podcast. Please feel free to visit me online at www.terminalvalue.biz where you can subscribe, find me on social, and then we can connect and just keep the conversation going. I'm really looking forward to hearing from you and I hope you have a wonderful day. All rights reserved. No part of this broadcast may be produced in any form by any means without written permission from Business of Life, LLC. All trademarks and brands referred to herein are the property of their respective owners.